Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I want to return to my video game in Space Roots and show you a game called Outer Wilds. Sure, it has campfires and big wooden towers, but we also have spaceships and planets, and that's why I got to find out about it. So, this was originally released a few years ago as a student game, a final year project for a bunch of students, and... Well, you know, it caused a bit of a stir because it was a really rather small, beautiful little game that involved spaceships, which is why I play it. So, at the time, Kerbal was kind of popular and uh, orbital mechanics, well, the orbital mechanics actually work in this. I can put myself into an orbit and the gravity of this tiny world will pull me around if I can just get it right. Um, but, everything is scaled down, and I mean not by a little, I mean by a lot. If I target this here, Dark Bramble is 24 kilometers away, so <laughs> you know, you can get there in a few minutes. That, of course, means that you're not spending forever building transfer windows or anything. You're just clicking and setting the autopilot. I'm sure you could do open transfer orbits if that's your thing, but really, the thing about this is investigating what the hell is up with this little pocket universe. The game as it was originally released was a you know, very small Unity project, but it had a bunch of planets that all had their own little weird mysteries. Uh, now, it ended up going to the Games Developers Conference and winning the top award at the Independent Games Festival, which kind of surprised everyone. Nobody had seen it coming. I was surprised to even see it at GDC. Dark Bramble is, well, it's a world which is being, it, I don't know, it's growing out of a giant a giant tree with thorns and stuff. And I'm just going to try and fly down and land inside this thing. Ooh, what the heck is in here? Very, very cool stuff. So after winning that, it then went on a crowdfunding site called fig.io. In fact, it was the first game to go on there. That was a crowdfunding site that was very specifically designed for investors to be able to not just back the games so that they could get a copy, but back the game so that they could actually share in the profits. Uh-huh. This seems to have some sort of weird thing going on here. And I obviously backed the thing right away. I couldn't invest in the game. I wanted to, but I was not a US citizen at that time. Since then, it's uh, of course... Oh. Where are we? What is that light? Let's go and check it out. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, goodness! Oh, dear. Well, of course, when you're getting into the deeps and you see lights, you should know that here be anglerfish. But the game actually is built around a loop where when you die, you go back to the start. Everything resets, and this is actually part of the plot. Because as soon as you spawn into the universe, there are some things that are in a specific state. And your goal is to figure out why you're stuck in this loop. Actually, I don't know if that's the goal. Everyone, I, I've largely presumed that since we're in a Groundhog Day situation that you want to figure out what's going on using the powers that have been given to you. Getting my suit on, jumping in my spaceship, and getting into space because I want to find a world where the time is actually really important to figuring out what's going on with it. There's my world here, there's the planet, and... That's the Atoll Rock, that's our moon, that's Dark Bramble, and this here is Ash Twin. So Ash Twin is basically a binary planet, and when you start out, one planet is all covered in sand. Very, very deep sand. But its neighbour is pulling in the sand because of the force of gravity. Here we go. Excellent. The Outer Wilds has landed. That's one small step for an alien onto a very small planet. Yes, it's a sandy little dust ball with nothing going on but this world above us. That's interesting. Usually when I get here, the sand is running, but maybe I've changed the universe or maybe it just doesn't start right away. Go on. Show them your sand-sucking skills. Oh, there it goes. Wow. 
it's starting to pull the sand in. That's crazy. And so you can actually get from one world to the other if you like, although, of course, bad things happen. Uh, so I'm going to try and get out of here. Oh, get out of here. I don't want to get pulled over just yet. I do have a little jetpack, so I'm actually quite capable of handling this. Oh! Now, if I go to the pole of this world, there are some exposed structures here already, but there's there's no way to get inside of them at this point. Uh, there's the other space. There's the other planet, uh, and there's a solar station, incidentally, which is in a very low solar orbit. I will have to try to get to that. Okay, so I'm in a slightly higher orbit above the sun. I'm waiting for the solar station to orbit beneath me, and then I will pounce. Here it comes. I just have to figure out how to match velocities with it, which I can't lock onto it with my autopilot, so this is kind of hard. Um, so I have to go faster than it, which means I also need to give it radial velocity to make sure that I don't fly off into space. This is not the easiest maneuver, and the dog is running by. <laughs> oh, nope, losing it here, losing it. Ah, oh, darn. Darn, I've lost the station once again. Um, obviously, I'm having to fly this by the seat of my pants, which is an experience that I don't often have to do in Kerbal, I guess. Okay. Well, I don't have any speed gauges or orbital displays or anything. I don't even know how close I am to the sun, except by looking. So, um, yeah. Things are definitely not the easiest thing here. And I think I'm going too slow. I'm falling! It's got me! <laughs> Time to reset once again. The Nomai bring me back from the brink and put me back at the start of my timeline. Okay, here we go catching up once again. I've practically matched velocities and now I just need to figure out if there's a place I can land. I mean, that looks like a landing site, doesn't it? I mean, surely that would be the most obvious thing, but how do you land when there's no gravity here? I don't think there's a docking port on this spacecraft, so I, I'd i have to find something that has artificial gravity. Let's... Oh! Okay. And I cracked my windshield. What am I saying? Windshield? It's a solar windshield this close to the sun. Okay. Oh, uh, no. Okay, apparently I'm not able to land. It's just letting me fall off into space. Maybe... Maybe there's another place that I can land. Let's take a look. Is there something like underneath this thing? Do I have to land upside down? It does look like there's a structure there. In fact, that looks like a door. Do you see that? Maybe I should like EVA and try to try to get in here. It keeps on wanting to lock onto things which aren't there. Maybe, maybe that? Maybe I can land upside down in that. No! No, I'm falling into the sun! Don't fall into the sun! <laughs> Oh, man. This is highly enjoyable in all the worst ways. <laughs> the control system totally isn't what I expect. Roll control. I keep pushing the, the wrong button for roll. and it, Or I keep pushing Q because I think it'll roll me and it makes me get out of my seat. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't think I can land here. And I've managed to land the la damage the landing gear, the headlamps, and the windshield. The solar windshield. I mean, it's shielding it from the wind inside. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to leave you guys behind because I can't figure out what to do here. It does look very cool, though, flying this close to it. So how do you repair your spaceship? Well, it actually tells you. You go on an EVA, which is fun. You know, you get to jump out and float around in deep space. This actually gets you a good chance to look at your spaceship, which is not exactly the most high-tech spaceship. I love the fact that it uses large amounts of wood, which may seem out of place on a high-tech spaceship, but I will point out that many heat shields actually use wood, or have used wood in the past, before the invention of things like phenolic impregnated carbon ablator. I, I, whatever it is, though, I'm going to say they were able to repair that gold-plated windshield pretty neatly. That obviously explains why I wasn't being baked alive inside my spacecraft as I tried to rendezvous in low solar orbit. Now, where am I? I get flung out of the sun and because uh, I got my orbit wrong. And I'm a long, long way out at this point. So yeah, this is Brittle Hollow, and that is Hollow's Lantern, which is a 
highly active moon that's basically bombarding this planet and knocking holes in its crust. And as you can guess, it's, like, it's one of these things where, you know, if you get there early, there's things you can find. If you get there late, there's other things you can find. So you have to make several passes through the solar system to solve the mystery. But let's, uh, let's get in here. Okay, bit of a nice landing there. Let's go and see what we can find. So there's this here. And this is not being constructed by my species, it is being constructed by the Nomai, the precursors, and they have left behind writing that you can translate. Beneath your feet lies the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. Oh, I found that earlier. If you are prepared to make your first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon, descend the steps to the entrance below. The knowledge held within will help you on your journey. Okay. It's night. That's why I'm... Oh, oh, it's this rock shard. You see, that every time I look away from it, it moves. There are a few other quantum items that behave like that. In this case, we've got some writing attached to the top, I guess. Plume, Felix, and I have determined this atypical shard of rock is the reason objects in this grove are behaving in a quantum manner. A unique signal is coming from this shard. Curiously, our friend, the Wandering Moon, sounds the same. This quantum shard from the Wandering Quantum Moon, perhaps it is even a small piece of the moon itself? I've also heard the same signal this shard produced calling from Giant's Deep, Timber Hearth, and the Hourglass Twins. Suppose there are other shards like this one. Now, when they're talking about signal, there is one other thing I haven't shown, and that is the signal scope. Which, if I point at this, it shows strong quantum fluctuations, but you can also see it on other plants. So let's actually jump over using my jetpack. So there's multiple frequencies you can run this on. So you can find your other people in various parts of the universe. But the quantum fluctuations are obviously going to be key to finding out important things. Okay, let's follow those steps down into the depths of the world. Find out what great machineries once powered this you know, grand part of civilization which is now crumbling due to the effects of its moon. Here's me just actually trying to fill time as I look around. It does certainly look very interesting. We have one of these lock things. You can switch the mode, you know, of the direction and all that. And there's some more translated writing. The Tower of Quantum Knowledge is 90 meters below me. And the Southern Observatory is 550 meters below me, which is the other side of the planet, probably. Now, I can't get in here right now, but I can send a probe in, which lets me take a look around with a camera. That could be useful. I can see things by turning the camera around. You can send these probes off into their own orbits, and there's also cases where you can send them through little portals into areas that you can't get. But let's follow the glowy light trail thing, which video game speak shows me is, uh, is one of these transport things. I know how this looks. I've played games before. I know it's not a disintegrator beam. Or maybe it is. Maybe it's disintegrating me and making me feel I'm moving. Above you stands the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you're making your first pilgrim, ascend these stairs and journey to the last knowledge you need for your journey. Stairs? What stairs? Ah, yes, of course. Gravity is weird in this game as well. Just in case you were wondering. I think I can get up here. Ready? Come on! Ha! <laughs> no. Denied. Even the power of the jetpack cannot get me up here. This will be a conundrum I shall have to solve. But let's go exploring elsewhere. What is this, I wonder? The crossroads. Okay, let's try activating this. Ah! Let's follow it. Oh, that's pushing me backwards. Let's go the other way. Once again, flowing through this disintegrating moon. Where is the sun? Sun looks like it has a few minutes left. Nice that somebody left these light sources all around here.
Oh, it's the black hole! And now I am shot off into deep space. That is something there. Oh wow, the center of Brittle Hollow has come and is now floating in deep space here. Or this is the telescope, maybe. That's what this is. This is the actual telescope here. There's the comet that you saw earlier. Wish I had a bit more oxygen. Oh, excellent. Oxygen tanks refilled. Thank you. But is that... Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, hey. What is this? We have some... Oh! Welcome to the White Hole Station. Did you fall through the black hole by accident? You can use this warp tower to return to Brittle Hollow. Ooh! Nice! The star still there. Hmm. The whole thing just seems to have started rotating. Wonder what that could mean. Oh, that look at we get the telescope moving. Whoa! Hey, I get teleported back. Excellent. Wonder where my ship actually is. Oh, it's 15 kilometers. Okay. Yeah, I totally went the wrong way. What the heck is this? I gotta figure out what to do with this. Oh, there's no my departure time, arrival time. I think my ship now fell through the white hole by the looks of things. Oh, I can refuel my jetpack here, that's good. The Hanging City. Oh, looks like that is a no my skeleton. Oh, hey, new tech. Another tiny secret up, up or released. Um, yeah, so what I'm finding here is that there seems to be some weird temporal problems where when I'm teleporting, I'm arriving before I left. Which is, of course, perhaps relevant to the time loop that I am in. Anyway, I think we're getting on towards the end of this cycle. And <laughs> right on cue. You hear that rumbling? That is the sound a star makes when it explodes. At least it does in this game. So I just got to see it. There it is. The inexorable expanding ball of plasma that will soon consume me and all my family and friends. But instead return me to the start of this cycle once more. And that is Outer Wilds in a nutshell. Uh, it is in the Epic Store right now. It's on Xbox One. And yeah, it's not for everyone. But I certainly have been thoroughly enjoying messing around in this tiny solar system and finding lots of interesting and weird mechanisms. I've dug deep into ancient ruins and mysteries and occasionally flown straight into the ground. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.